This is New Guinea also known as Papua, it is the northern part of the Australian continent. In 1959 the Freeport Mining Company wanted West Papua's vast mineral wealth. And in 1959, an American lawyer proposed an illegal use of United Nations trusteeship, that a cooperative UN could in effect sell the Papuan people, or trade their sovereignty without their consent to Indonesia, an Asian power from whom Freeport could obtain a mining license for West Papua's wealth of gold, silver and copper. During 1960 the US learned that neither the Commonwealth of Australia, nor Malaysia wanted to be involved in this scheme, and so the proposal was modified to ask the United Nations itself to act as the UN-appointed administrator that would then ask Indonesia to become a colonial power leading the colony. When America elected John F. Kennedy as president, the Freeport director Robert Lovett told Kennedy, to appoint Lovett's friend McGeorge Bundy as the new U.S. national security advisor. To Kennedy's credit, throughout 1961 the National Security Council under Bundy pleaded without success for Kennedy to authorize this scheme. Yet when West New Guinea held elections to establish its own government council recognized by Australia and New Zealand, America had refused to acknowledge the elected council and instead told Indonesia how to exploit the United Nations to gain Asian control of this Pacific territory. Indonesian officials said they like the idea although they do not wish to call the proposed trusteeship a trusteeship. Six months later the UN Secretary General was killed, and, due to an action by Indonesia two days before his death, he was replaced by Indonesia's Burmese friend Utant. Four weeks later an American journalist Bruce Biosat published news of the American proposal to betray West New Guinea to Indonesian colonization. And on that night, the West New Guinea Council held an emergency night session. The Council wrote a manifesto of independence, and designed a flag and other national instruments which they presented to the colonial Dutch the following day. On the 1st of December 1961 the Dutch raised the new Morning Star flag next to their own across West New Guinea and renamed the territory as West Papua according to the Council's manifesto. Also on 1st December, in Washington the U.S. National Security Advisor McGeorge Bundy was personally pleading with Kennedy to authorize the proposal to in effect sell the West Papuan people to buy good U.S.-Indonesian relations for the 1960s. Irrespective of whatever America wanted, the Security Council and United Nations were now under domination by Utant and his friends in India and Indonesia. India took advantage by invading Goa, an invasion the US, UK, and France found they were now unable to denounce in the Security Council. Two days later Indonesia launched another invasion of West Papua, again, the Security Council was silent. And although the Papuans were again already arresting the Indonesian soldiers, in New York, Utant asked America to help force the Dutch to request the illegal use of UN trusteeship for West New Guinea. America appointed Freeport director Robert Lovett's best friend, Ellsworth Bunker to help Indonesia get the Dutch to sign the agreement asking for UN occupation. Utant then wrote a letter promising Indonesia that the United Nations would not allow the West Papuan people a UN referendum before Indonesia got possession of their lands. Utant negotiated with Pakistan to provide UN troops to occupy West Papua. In August the Netherlands submitted and signed the New York Agreement asking the United Nations to occupy and subjugate the West Papuan people. Utant announced his joy and pride, that if, the General Assembly approved the deal, that West Papua would be the largest territory the United Nations had ever managed. Instead of 30 days notice, at the opening of the 1962 General Assembly the Assembly members were given two days notice that the issue of West Papua would be dealt with after other business on Friday 21st September. On the afternoon of 21st of September 1962 our governments were told to vote without debate whether to approve or oppose the proposal that the new Secretary General was sponsoring, and told that some members would be allowed to explain their vote afterwards. For 59 years West Papua has suffered a foreign occupation which our governments are responsible for, and for 59 years our news journalists have failed to report weekly abuse and looting suffered by of our Pacific War allies of West Papua. The simple solution for any nation which supports West Papua's right to freedom from foreign oppression, is to put news of the United Nations Authorization for the Occupation, General Assembly Resolution 1752, on the agenda of the UN Trusteeship Council, to whom the occupation should have been reported in 1962. Each of our nations is in violation of our moral and legal obligation to put news of General Assembly Resolution 1752 on the agenda of the UN Trusteeship Council, 
yet this simple act has also been excluded from our newspapers for nearly 59 years while Indonesia has executed hundreds of thousands simply for raising their nation's flag.